All right, hello. Um, so I'm uh, primarily a maker at the moment, currently since 2006. And I, what I will be um, tackling today is unpicking my latest, well, the work I did in 2014, which is called The Chapter House. And is a, this was an interdisciplinary dance piece with live video documentation. Uh, uh, by uh, Mark Coniglio, who is the inventor of the Isadora software and co-director uh, of uh, Troika Ranch, if some of you are, um, uh, know him. And um, the chapter house uh, is actually being performed again on the 12th of April at the Laban Theatre, should you be uh, interested in coming. And I intend to use this work as a base to discuss notions of live documentation in performance through digital media and the body as a living archive and site of discourse open to shifting angles of gaze and interpretation. Uh, what I would like to be responding through this uh, paper is uh, questions around how documentation can be a source for inspiration and generative of new work, but also discuss the tension between the body and its mediatized image. Yeah. So um, I will start by um, this, which is not the chapter house. Um, and this, and so we, that's the latest work from Banksy. And um, I'll explain or I'll become more, um, I guess, hopefully understandable why I'm, I'm starting from this, where we have an image of uh, uh, the girl from Les Miserables with uh, tears in her eyes as uh, Gaz um, is approaching her. And the artwork is across the French embassy and includes a stand styled QR code, which once we, if you put the phone over, you can see uh, uh, a video from the refugee camps at Calais, uh, allegedly on the 5th of January. Um, I'm using this uh, as a starting point just because for me, this work unravels layers of meaning and critique on, on current socio-political issues, but also comments on the image-based society and amb ambiguity of representation and links with some of my conceptions and ways I'm positioning myself as an artist in terms of performance and, uh, and, dig and media in performance. Um, so uh, how it all began. Uh, the chapter house. So in 2013, having ha after having had seven years of making work, I came to a place where I wanted to take a pause from creating new work and just take stock of the body of my work so far and practice. Uh, in a way, I wanted to consolidate my, my practice or pin it down or find ways where um, uh, it, it kind of, I can define it as such. I can define yeah, the practice of dance, yeah, of my practice. So I began a year of research. And during the process of looking back at the body of my work, uh, one of the main things I had to do is revisit any archives of it, right? And uh, these archives were spanned from any video recordings to images I had, various notations, sketchbook. But primarily, the site I had to revisit uh, first was my uh, own body as the living archive of these performances. Uh, just to um, give a little bit of background, all my works, in all my works, I perform uh, in them, right? Uh, and in a way, that made me also the subject of my research. And my need to look back was something to do with uh, collecting or remembering uh, uh, parts of my history and trajectory, rather than um, just looking at a journey to memory lane and uh, yeah, and a nostalgia as such. And it became a methodology in itself for moving forward into something potentially uh, able to create or give uh, uh, new something uh, new. Um, so I developed a method of practice that followed a sequence of collecting any archives that, I, uh, that were to be found from this history, whether that they spanned from seven years ago or the, just the day before re-embodying them in the present based on my memory of them rather than the act of memorizing them, documenting the re-embodiments anew and using the freshly produced documents to repeat the same process. So you can understand that kind of actually took a year of doing that and with enough gaps in time between. So, and that's hence how it became generative, the work. So it wasn't, um, yeah. What I became curious and interesting, interested in was that the archive I was looking at and reassembling would be living in the sense that new content would continue to be added in any 
uh, attempts of the reenactment. And it, in this sense, it would be also generative, so providing a source for seeding new work. It also became apparent how selective memory is and disrupted the idea uh, of the archive as an authority and carrier of the truth of the past. This further gave me the idea and challenge to explore documentation within the live performance. Um, so I, um, so having, so the, the in, within that year of, uh, in my process, what I did, I kind of chose, um, I kind of started to identify, let's say, some main thematics for, of what the body of my work um, was dealing with. And I, um, I distilled those into uh, what, I, uh, and what I felt were representing the essentials of my work, uh, and speaking of the overarching themes. Uh, after having done that, I invited Marco Niglio as a co-creator to the work. What I'd like to point out is that for me, when I talk about distillation, it did not come from a reductive process of based on a single source, uh, the archive, but rather developed from an opening of that archive to multiple interpretations through the methodology I mentioned previously. Yeah, so, uh, and, and what happened, what became the essence of the essential was uh, just by noticing what was persist persistently uh, creeping in every time of in, in the reenactment of, of the things I was kind of, um, um, and also <coughs> my selective processes, right? Um, so when I invited Mark, my in interest also similarly was how uh, uh, he, can, he will look at the essentials or what I thought were essentials and, and offer his own angle or interpretation or gaze, uh, which he would then um, uh, uh, um, uh, show back to the audience as another narration in and uh, of the digital uh, work he's, he does. So a little bit more about the work itself, um, and I will be showing a, a, a very few um, uh, moments of the work later on. Um, once I had arrived at the five chapters, so there's a textuality for me uh, in the work is, is both the movement of it, the language, I actually use text that is uh, spoken throughout the first part. There's two parts, the first part which is the performance of the work and the second with the live documentation and the second part which is uh, the video part, the installation, right? The, the thing that has, that is then um, showed back to the audience. So there's a movement, the language, the text that I'm using in the, in the first part, which describes uh, the themes of, of each chapter, uh, but in reverse language. So actually the, the language is, uh, you don't make sense of it, or you could if you, if you know how to hear backwards. So I had, so I wrote the text forward and then I learned it backwards and then I performed it live backwards and it was all documented, which was then played forwards at the second part. Um, and and, and this, then there's something in the work that very much deals about the treatment of time between the two parts, just because the first part is much longer and the second part is much condensed. So the amount of time it takes for us to experience to experience something through the body and the amount of time it needs when it goes through the image, yeah. So it's a. Um, um, so let me just kind of come back to this. I get a bit lost sometimes. Um, so the so the live part of the performance, or yeah, uh, entails myself and Mark on stage, busy with our work. So I'm performing my interpretation of the essentials of my work, delivering the reverse version, and Mark is capturing live, assembling and reordering the live action. The second part is the video part where selections of the live action get revealed with the added layer of the text being played back in reverse, therefore forward. Uh, for the first part, um, the, the, there was the intention of using long pauses and a rather slow-paced action, and this was done specifically to uh, let the audience into their own, a sense of their own presence. 
as a collective body and to make the audience listen. So my voice as the narrator informs us of something in reverse language about the course of events, but there's a suspension because of the meaning not being revealed immediately, suspension of the image and meaning uh, in order to pay attention to how images are joined and to the gaps that such join joinings cover over in order to produce space for fantasy. The duration of the second part is much more condensed and multi-layered. There is a strong textuality in the work, um, uh, both in the way movement and text are treated, how they get dismantled, assembled, and revisited in different orderings, but also how technology is used, in my intention, as a means to map space and events, as memory does, capture parts that draw the attention and play it back as another story to which we are all witnesses of its making. Um, so drawing, drawing from Nietzsche's notion of the inter internal uh, recurrence uh, to repeat some things to make it possible anew, the structure of the video as the reassemblage assemblage of scraps of memory intends to create a new story. The eclectic range of images is gathered and only through the frame of the story, forward text, are they put into a context or a narrative that is into the time of fiction. The attention to broken forms is insistent. The audience is instructed to look at the fragments that endure at the partial nature of things that survive over time. So almost like a warning, these images speak of the incompleteness of our experience of the past. So the work intends to open up questions around the performance itself, the expectations met or not in the encounter with the audience, and also to be more like a game of propositions where nothing is being produced or acted, but rather something is being endured and supported. In the end, the work is also a reflection on the limitations and possibilities of performance, collaboration, and the engagement of the spectators. And a little bit around some of my artistic concerns and how, um, um, how this kind of has made uh, the work. So with technological advancements, marketing and social media, for me, a lot of the times, the presence of art sometimes uh, is more in the image of it rather than the work. Can you speak a little slower? slower. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Sorry. Okay. Apologies. So with, um, with technological advancements uh, in the marketing and social media, uh, often, for me, the presence of art becomes something that uh, relies more in the image of it rather than the work itself or the experience of it. So the demands placed upon the artist to produce the appropriate image sometimes seem greater than the artwork itself. And I'm talking as also from my experience as a maker and within the, the pressures of the, the industry currently. So questions for me then that arise are how does the image relate to the artwork? What is the artwork? And what are the iterative possibilities of mediatization? Yeah. My ongoing argument for this work was that technology within the live performance were to be used as another eye, another's gaze, another's perspective that stresses what happens in between stage and the public, those who do and those who see doing which also for me defines the contemporaneity of contemporary art within the reflexive society we live in. It was intended to expose something of the ephemeral and kinesthetic nature of dance and how it measures against the temporal medium of video and our own perceptive apparatus and memory that captures, intrudes, and affects the way one has access into the action as this is being remembered and replayed. Drawing on uh, Giddens' concept on reflexivity as a sociology feedback loop, whereby examining actions affect the entity doing the examining, or Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, if you want, in sociology, I wanted the video part of the work to be an exploration of how recording devices perform a choreography with our memory. The need to grasp the matter of what has been in order to remake it differently reassembling finite matter in infinite time and exposing the tension of the concreteness of the body versus the mediatized image. I guess I was also interested in making a point of the fact that the documentation of the artwork is not necessarily the experience of the artwork. Since the one-to-one -one translation is lost or failed, it is mediated and also argue that new technologies alter the artwork as they do not cancel it, but they do change it. 
and arguing for me that if taking making the argument that if in the digital era spatial is no longer geographical and that art as long as it assumes um, a position it ceases to function as art which is to subvert established positions then to cl claim offness one needs a concreteness so in this sense, having the work expose the mechan mechanics of the making and documentation before the fiction of the mediatized image, in my sense, achieves that outside position, that distance by the mere labor of assuming a critique, of assuming a distance and oftenness, a position outside of the construction of one's own reality. Um, the video part of this work as open form uh, and I'm using a concept formulated by Oscar Hansen, who's an architect, is based on an algorithm that never repeats in the same way. Uh, obviously, it's an algorithm that also invites the question of how uh, digital media, with mi digital media, you never know what lies beneath or the layers of information that need to be processed before any image becomes visible. So this, in turn, questions the vali validity of the mediatized image as a bearer of truth in, of any altered uh, sorry, excuse me, of any alleged experience and whether such thing as a flat surface of reality exists and the many layers of meaning it can assume and point to. And I can now actually go to show you. And it's all very kind of set within a, an open space that gradually gets constructed. Yeah, an iPad. What was on the image? Um, it's me. He's actually. So that's. That's live. Real yeah, real time. So and it gets in, and it gets back into the computer and it all gets then projected from one source. Let me just get to a point. I have put down the minutes that I think I. Have. One minute. One minute. All right. Okay. And the sound is all from what is being recorded live. So everything is being recorded live, and everything is then being put into one source and played back here. So it's a mix of everything. I just give you. That's be also to protect which has generated ill will and people have protected greatly from sans be also to protect
I take, I put some papers, then I draw the, like a washing line, and then they appear, they move. Chapter, from the verb, Pipdim, three. Ptosis. Chapter, which means to form. Ptosis.